Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Cabin Creek, located in Mays County, Oklahoma, between Union Colonel William A. Phillips and his 3,000-man Native American Brigade against Confederate Colonel Stand Waitee and his 2,000-man pro-Confederate Cherokee Warriors on the 1st and 2nd of July, 1863. Union Major General James Blunt had received what he believed good news to continue his original mission to return pro-Union Native Americans to their homeland in the Indian Territory. To start this mission, he ordered Union Colonel William A. Phillip and his 3,000-man brigade to escort about 1,000 Cherokee, Cree, and Seminole families back to their homes. The prior intersigned struggles between the pro-Union and pro-Confederate Native Americans had resulted in widespread destruction in the area. The result of that initial conflict had been that the Seminoles and Cree forced to stay with Colonel William Phillips for some time up until that point. At this time, Union Colonel James M. Williams of the 1st Kansas Colored Infantry led a Union supply train of more than 300 wagons. They had left Kansas to help reinforce Fort Gibson. Seeing an opportunity, Confederate Colonel Stan Wadey and his pro-Confederate Cherokee had been joined by a force of Texas soldiers and meant to intercept the Union troops. They intended to do this at Cabin Creek, located south of Baxter Springs, in a fortified ford. Unfortunately, as he arrived, he realized he was outnumbered and had to wait for Confederate Brigadier General William L. Cabell and his 1,500 men from Arkansas. By the time the reinforcements got there, though, Cabell realized that he could not ford the Grand River due to an unexpected flooding. This left Wadey alone as the Union realized their advantage and attacked him. The Union pushed Wadey and his troops away, and the wagon train continued the rest of the way to Fort Gibson unmolested. These supplies would prove vital to Union troops in their attempt to return the Seminoles, Cree, and Cherokee back to their homes and give the Union troops an enhanced presence in Indian territories. Losses were nothing like battles to the east, with only 21 killed, wounded, and missing from the Union forces and 59 killed, wounded, or missing from Wadey's Confederates. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.